welcome back to Pucks in Deep, episode number 50, James. Yeah, there's, yep, there it is. The biggie right, right here. here. Milestone. Big one, even bigger guest for you guys. We got junior forward and leading scorer for UNH, Angus Crookshank. Angus, welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm honored to have the, the 50th episode. Yeah, all oh. Well, we planned it I mean, all right. Yeah, get a honestly, good start for it. We've so. had this wildcat sweater just waiting for you. So we're like, <laughs> who better than the man, the myth himself here? Uh, you know, any shout outs you want to give? Like, this is a big milestone, like you said. Pucks in deep. Uh, save this epi for you. Like, you know, shout out the boys, the family. What are you thinking here? I'll give a shout out to my parents, obviously. And yeah. uh, shout out to the boys at Mad Court here. Love you guys. There we go. First question, you know, you're our first UNH wildcat we've had on the show here. Um, you know, we just got to ask you straight up, why do you want to play college hockey? And I think <laughs> Ralph Cox really set you up well here. So don't, don't let us down. Uh, for the girls. Yeah. It's <laughs> obvious. It's obvious. Um, <laughs> you know, he, he, he uh, he na- nailed it on the head right there. Facts. Okay. But, um, no, I, I mean, I love college hockey. The atmosphere is, I don't think it's matched anywhere else in the world. I mean, the closest thing would probably be in Europe with like the crazy soccer fans that they have in the right. stands, but yeah. it's a, it's a pretty unique environment and I'm fortunate to be able to play college hockey. That's a great comparison. I mm-hmm. love that with crazy soccer fans over in Europe, you know, getting into the kind of atmosphere that college hockey is known for. Like you guys are coming off a, uh, your first, you know, series without fans there. You had a nice uh, series win against Maine, but I mean, that's a huge rivalry that usually it would just be packed and going nuts. You know, how was that? you know, adjusting to that kind of atmosphere when you usually would have a much bigger advantage at home. It was, uh, it was definitely different. I mean, like my first shift, I was kind of freaking out a little bit. Like, where's all the, where's all the noise? Like you said, like, I mean, <laughs> playing against Maine, it's jam packed, whether we go up there, or whether they come to you up, come to UNH. So it's, it was a little different for sure. And norm, normally we don't play them that early in the season, but, uh, yeah, I mean, you kind of get past as a player that like, you don't really notice much of the fans when you're playing anyways. I mean, you hear like the background noise, but you're kind of in your, your own little zone. So after kind of the first shift, you got you kind of settled in a little bit with that red. Uh, yeah, just like, where is everybody? It's, it's been crazy, big man. It's been nuts. I mean, speaking of Literally, crazy though. Um... Well, they, I don't know if you guys watched the game at all, but they lined some of the seats with like white shirts. So yeah. whatever main comes down, it's white oh, out the wet night. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> that, they made it con- like a fake white out the wet, I guess, but. You're like, they played in those shirts, but nobody picked them up. Like, come on. <laughs> That's tough. I mean, at least you guys showed up, played well. And then now, like, you've been waiting a couple of weeks, obviously. So, I mean, you have a pretty crazy week set up right now, scheduled to play three games in four days. Uh, you know, how are the boys feeling with uh, that kind of ramped up schedule when you kind of, you know, had to wait a lot in between these games? Yeah, I mean, it's... Uh... Well, we've had two breaks right now because of uh, this, the pandemic. So we found right. out the first time when we were about to play Boston College, literally on the day of the game. Like oh. we got off the ice from morning skate and we got told we're on pause for two weeks. No, oh, that's tough. Um, and then it's uh, then we thought then we played the main games, and then two days later we found that we had we were on pause for another two weeks. Um, but I mean, everyone's you just you kind of got to take it in stride. I mean, there's not it's out of your control. There's nothing you can really do about it per se. All you can kind of do is just try to stay in shape. I mean, it gets yeah. cold here. <laughs> Funny enough, like our, our driveway froze over. <laughs> so we've kind of, we go out and like make, make up like stick handling drills a little bit, but uh, I mean, coaches, the coaches have done a great job kind of dialing us back in. I mean, we've only had four days of real practice leading up to our game tomorrow night against UMass. So, I mean, obviously I was talking to, uh, to you guys out, over Instagram and I was saying how we're doing like two days. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, that's kind of what it takes right now. I mean, it's just kind of, I mean, for lack of a better description, it is what it is. Mm-hmm. You just kind of have to deal it. with both punch and do what you can with it. It's tough on the coaches too, just to it's adjust on film and everything. Just last second. I mean, yeah. Like, all right. BC's not happening. It's 2020 though. It's <laughs> yeah. the next one. We got, we got a new year. 2021 yeah, sure is coming here and just new start for everyone. But yeah, I'm uh, sure that was a pain in the ass for them. Yeah, no, it had, had to be. But uh, what are you what are you looking forward most to this new year here? Um, you know, obviously, um, it was tough last year. You guys getting your season ended early and everything. But um, you know, what, what's what are you most excited for here towards this season? Towards the season here? I mean, hopefully, we play more than two games. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, Facts. But uh, yeah, would. I mean, honestly, like coach kind of talks about talks about it to us all the time. Just kind of being mentally tough. Mm-hmm. I mean, just 
like I was just talking about, just kind of rolling with the punches, just making sure that you're as prepared as you can be. Um, I mean, hopefully win some big games along the, along the way and hopefully make a bit of a splash in hockey East and hopefully nationally. Yeah, absolutely. I like that answer. Uh, you mentioned your coach there. I mean, you came in with him at first at the helm there for the three years. Uh, what do you think, you know, it is with, uh, coach Mike Souza, like, how does he, you know, how did he get you to commit to be a wildcat there? And, you know, what is his leadership like on and off the ice for you guys? You know, he's, uh, he's awesome. I mean, he, he expects a lot of us, but it's not, uh, it's not like it's in like a psycho coach sort of way. Um, <laughs> so he loves the program as much as he, like, as much as he talks about it. I mean, he's not a talk to talk whole, he'll put the work in. I mean, he expects it out of us because he played at UNH. I mean, he played on a lot of really, really good UNH teams and he knows kind of the expectation that comes with UNH hockey. I mean, he went to the national championship game in 99, kind of with Krog and all those guys. All on one side and have to recover quickly. And they lose control. And what they score, Sousa! Mike Sousa feed! You may lost track of the top line for a moment. And Sousa makes the pay. We are tied at two. I was just going to remark, Brian, how much I signed the top line was getting here in the third period. You cannot afford to turn your back on any one of these three guys in the top line of University of New Hampshire. The quick pass, Sousa, all the ball. So, yeah. he wants to see, obviously, UNH took a bit of a downturn kind of early to the 2010s, but yeah. uh, we, he wants to turn it around, and I think we're on the right track to do that. Yeah. I like that, yeah. And I think you are on a personal note as well. I mean, your freshman year, you had 10 goals. Last year, you had 16, and you already got two this year. I Is mean, that good? That's that's pretty damn good. Man. <laughs> you know what? What do you contribute your success to, and you know what are you doing to prepare for your seasons? Because it's obviously working out. Whatever you're doing. Uh, I mean, I just try to be the best version of myself. Okay. I mean, that's all coach asks from us is to be be the best player you can be. I mean, know what you're good at and play to your strengths. Um, I mean, it, and it kind of it makes us a better team as a whole. I mean, I'm lucky enough where I get to play with two very, very good hockey players in Jackson Pearson and Patrick Grasso. Yeah. And, uh, they, playing with guys like that who didn't think the way that they do, it makes, uh, my job a little easier, but I think we have a really good team this year. And I think we can do a lot of great things. I think I, I, I kind of want to jump into a milestone question here. Uh, we mentioned like, you know, past greats, like, like your coach who's been to the, the ship there as, as a wildcat, but you're coming up, you're currently tied. I don't know if you knew this, Tied with UNH legend James Van Riemsdyk with 28 tucks and a Wildcat sweater. So, you know, like, do you have anything planned for when you break his record tomorrow night? <laughs> What's the selling point? <laughs> um, I don't know. Just think for the next one, I guess. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. The next right. On, one next. <laughs> on the next. <laughs> on the next. Just tag him in a tweet. Or we'll do all that work for you. My bad. We got you. <laughs> got you. <laughs> Appreciate uh, that. Let's go yeah. dial back the clock again, though. 2018, you heard your name called in the fifth round by the Senators, you know. Walk us through that experience and what that means to you. Yeah, uh, that was uh, that's definitely a day I won't forget probably for the rest of my life. <laughs> um, funny enough, like I was, uh, I mean, I wasn't really sure going into that day, like that you hear some things, like you are going to get picked, some things that you aren't going to get picked. I mean, I tried to kind of keep, I honestly had the mindset of like, okay, like you're not going to get picked just so, just to avoid kind of that disappointment and put a bigger chip on my shoulder. Yeah. Right. Um, it's a good way to go. But so I admit, my brother was watch, watching the draft and I was making eggs around the corner and my phone went off and I checked my phone and my advisor had texted me saying like Ottawa fucking rice baby. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then right as soon as I read that text, my brother screamed around the corner and I came running around the corner. My name was popped up on the screen, Dude, I got which, was, right uh, <laughs> which was pretty cool. Uh, kind of gives me goosebumps right now. Just kind of remembering that moment. But, uh, being able to kind of spend that moment with my brother, especially, I mean, he's been a huge supporter of me. And then obviously my parents as well. I can't thank them enough for, I mean, everything they've done for me. I, there's no way for me to thank them really. Absolutely. I, other than just keep talking, but uh, yeah. no, huge congrats to you on that, man. That's, that's something I mean, uh, every how, kid dreams of though. How good did those eggs taste <laughs> after that hearing that news? My God. They were the best eggs I've ever had. Just oh, yeah. slammed so them, good. I bet. <laughs> and then just to add to it though, you being a Vancouver boy, you know, obviously it's Ottawa, but just being drafted by an NHL Canadian team, you know, that's just adds to it. I feel like. 
Yeah, no, that was pretty cool. My dad was uh, my dad was with the Habs fan, so he's well, he still is. So he was kind of happy he wasn't Toronto. Yeah, yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> but I mean, Ottawa and Montreal had uh, some heated moments in their in their time. But I mean, at the end of the day, I, it, it's cool. Like it's really cool being drafted to a Canadian team. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, with all due respect, hockey's Canada's game. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I got you. Not taking. <laughs> but uh, no, is it? I mean, at the end of the day, I, I was lucky enough to be drafted into the NHL, and that's the way I like I look to look out of it. Absolutely. Do you feel like there's more pressure on you now that you have your rights are owned in college hockey, or would... like pressure? Just like yeah, like pressure mean, being drafted for Canadian. Or just being uh, drafted in general. Like, do you feel pressure every you know game day? Like, oh, I'm drafted. I got to yeah, really compared to other college players that wouldn't have that you know tag with them. Yeah. Oh, uh, personally, no. Um, I mean, yeah. everyone's different, yeah. but I mean, I, I try not to really think about it. I mean, right now my focus isn't on where I'm going to be down the road. My focus is on the University of New Hampshire. Yeah. Tomorrow. And I mean, obviously all the, uh, all the stuff that happened before I'm being drafted and all that's great. Mm-hmm. And I'm not taking that for granted at all. But I mean, at the end of the day, I'm representing UNH and wanting UNH to win a national championship. And that's my goal right now. Yeah, we're well, doing a hell of a job at that. I mean, we're watching yeah. your highlight videos today. I mean, gosh, there's they quite got a, every, there's every quite a few. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I love the Senators Prospects YouTube page too. Yeah, like, they did a good job. Woo. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, that was, that was exciting. That was a fun post to make today. I was just like, wow, there's so many highlights to choose from. So, um, yeah. thanks for making our that. job easier. <laughs> that's, that's what we want to say. <laughs> let's get let's get back to UNH though. I mean, just talk about the culture there, and you know, what's it like on campus? You know, is the hockey team the big thing, or What's it like on campus during a normal season, let's say? Yeah, we're um, pretty fortunate. I mean, the two big sports here are definitely hockey and football. Yeah. Um, kind of depending on the time of year. I mean, more once kind of hockey season winds down, obviously football takes over. Mm-hmm. Um, but kind of right. through kind of the fall, winter, kind of into the new year, hockey's the big thing here. And I mean, it's kind of it's kind of cool. Like, I mean, not a lot of I mean American schools can say that. Because, I mean, with a, I, I don't mean this in, like, a bad way, but a lot of schools are dominated kind of by football, basketball, right. like oh, sports sure. like that, whereas hockey kind of takes a back, backseat in a lot of those schools. Mm-hmm. And being able to play for a school where hockey's up there is is pretty cool. I mean, we get a, we have an unbelievable fan base. I mean, we sell out pretty much every night, and we're pretty fortunate to have a fan base like that. And they travel pretty well, too. We uh, Wherever we go, we always have union fans, which is pretty cool. Absolutely. I mean, it means a lot probably as a player. I mean, uh, yeah. what else, you know, what talk about, talk about the Whittemore center there. Like you said, yeah. you sell out most games, you know, like that rivalry with Maine, it, would that be the game that we got to go to once things open up here? Like what is that atmosphere like when you skate out to all those crazy fans out there? Yeah, it's, uh, it's something else. It's different at both barns. So up at Alphon, yeah. um, we got to go there too. <laughs> where you skate, where you skate out, you have to skate the entire length of the ice to go warm up uh-huh. and <laughs> If you've ever been to Alpha on the, uh, the student section kind of overhangs over yeah. where everyone's warming up yeah. and like, you'll be, we'll be doing one of their chant the entire time. You're getting spit on <laughs> all this wrecked. sort of stuff. Like they're attacking your moms, your, your brothers, your sisters, everything. They're doing the research, which is pretty, pretty crazy. It's kind of cool. Yeah. It should fire you up. Um, yeah, respect. <laughs> well, exactly. Whereas, um, like it's, it plus it's a lot, like it's a smaller barn. So it's a little more old school kind of type pack. Right. Where the thing I love about UNH, those everyone's dressed in white and everyone's everyone's on their feet the entire game. Like even yeah, not just the student electric. section, like everywhere else. It's that's great. It's honestly nothing I've ever experienced before in my life. And that's what it's, college hockey uh, needs. You know, there's none of that in the NHL, so that yeah. makes college hockey. It's a big ring like, too. Yeah, right. That just is looking at barn. pictures of it. It looks massive, like for a college ring. Yeah, no, it's it's plus it's Olympic size too. Yeah, yeah, which is, that's too. <laughs> which I love. I, I personally love. You do? Yeah. But, I mean, uh, my favorite is your game probably a little more. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's kind of cool. Like it's, it gives you like a home ice advantage. Um, but I mean, so my first couple of years, it took a little adjusting going from like a, we had like a home and home. We'll, mm-hmm. we'll play at home first night, then going away the second night. You're kind of, the second night, you're, it takes you like the first kind of five minutes to readjust to the smaller rink. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, it, but also at the same time playing on the big ring helps us at the same time. Right. I like that. I kind of, so we haven't talked about a whole lot of stats so far. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm a big stat sheet guy. So I want to jump into maybe one of the grittiest Februaries I've ever seen. 
from a player because you had back to back weekends of game misconducts <laughs> last season. One versus Vermont, and I think the other one was versus Boston. I could be wrong. What were those fair calls, or was Stripes just you know he wasn't a fan of big last names? What <laughs> what happened there? Okay, so the Vermont one is the most ridiculous ten minute misconduct I think you'll ever hear. Let's go. So. <laughs> I'm ready. Vermont had just iced the puck. So mm. we were having them in their zone pretty good, and they just iced the puck. And earlier in the game, for some reason, the refs were freaking out. Like, one of our guys, like, flipped the puck, like, away from one of the refs. <laughs> and, like, not just, like, just not even thinking about it. Yeah. And, like, you freaked out and gave him, like, a warning and all this sort of stuff. <laughs> so they, Vermont amazing. iced the puck. I, I was back in our zone, and I shot the puck down the ice to where the faceoff would be. Yeah. Like, like, not didn't like pull on wrist shot, not even slap shot. Literally, like a, a light saucer pass down the uh, ice. Just help them out. <laughs> like literally to the circle that that it was getting on. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, I hear a whistle, and he goes, "Oh, no, just the full ten, up. The full yeah. ten minutes." I'm like, "What?" I was like, "Dude, I was literally sending the puck yeah. down the ice mm-hmm. for oh your job." God. Yeah, Vermont paid him. So I had to sit. I had to sit ten for that, <laughs> and then the following the following weekend. <laughs> So I was, we were playing Boston University yeah. at, at BU and I got the puck in, at the red line and it was about to chip it in. I see a guy coming out of the corner of my eye, hands probably like this high, mm-hmm. going right for my, right for my face. Yeah. And so I mean, instinctively, like I'm not just going to eat a two fists right to my face. <laughs> and that, so, so I put my stick up. Like to protect myself like this, and one of my hands, like, like his hands hit my face, my hands hit his face. Yeah. But he does the full. Oh, just <laughs> sold it. And then they, they send me to the box for two minutes originally. Then they look at it. Next thing you know, uh, I'm they break my stick into like, four pieces nah, down the hallway. He needs more. Oh my god! <laughs> and he got nothing. He didn't even get a two. Yeah. Nothing. Was he good? Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't. I didn't love the call. To say the least. <laughs> back to back. Yeah, you're already coming in hot just from helping the refs out the weekend before. Mm-hmm. God, we need to get tape on this. God, just shows you can't be a nice guy out here. No. No. I'm thinking you just fired like you weren't even thinking about it, just an absolute snapper down the rink. And then <laughs> <laughs> ref was yeah, imagine that I just sent a slap shot right into the student section. <laughs> <laughs> you should you should have got your money's worth there. He was ready to tee in. Honestly, I should have. I should have grabbed the puck after I sent it down and then sent it back down the other end of the ice. <laughs> yeah, a little souvenir for the fans. Just start tossing pucks out there. I love it. I mean, exactly. Colin probably not like that as much, but God. All right, I'm glad I asked about that. Or uh, another thing is I, I love block shots. You did have 16 block shots oh, your freshman yeah. year. For some reason last year, you guys just didn't record them, at least on the website. So I was <laughs> upset about that. I'm assuming you hit over 20. What are we thinking this season? I think it says you're down for one and two games. Not bad. No. Not bad, but could we see that get up to, you know, 20, 20 plus maybe? 20 plus plus. Oh, we, we can definitely get that 20 plus. Okay. Um, I, I know you guys, I know you guys love, uh, love when the boys eat box, no, but uh, they win games. That's kind of, that's kind of a big thing on our team is, uh, is blocking Damn shots, right. the big team. So As it should hopefully be. I can get up to the 20 plus. It, it wins games, man. We want to see you guys back in the tourney. What's it been? 2012 was the last time or I want to say 2012. That sounds right. Do you know off the top of your head? It was the last time you guys had a tournament appearance. Pop quiz. Probably when, Probably when Trevor Van Riemsdyk was here, so I'd say yeah. probably 2012, 2013. Yeah, yeah, that's what we're thinking. That'd be thinking my guess. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, we'll love to see the boys back there this year. I mean, yeah, if you can get about 30 goal. block shots just from yourself, Angus, <laughs> you're going to be set up looking real nice. That's what I'm thinking. That, that's one of the that's one of the key marks to to get into the, exactly. to get into the national championships, 20 plus block shots. I want you to start writing down 20 on your calendar and circling it until you hit it. Tell us, um, I saw in your video today, this is random, but I saw the fish on the ice. What's What's that about? Ooh, good question. So every home game, uh, whenever we score the first goal of the game, they send a, a frozen fish up, like a, that they buy at the market that day. It looks right expensive, man. It's a big goalie. piece of meat. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, <laughs> so my freshman year, they hadn't started freezing it yet, so it was like a raw fish. <laughs> um, and literally, so if, if we scored in the first period, it, that whole zone would literally stink for the rest <laughs> of the game. It was horrible, <laughs> but thankfully they started freezing them, so they didn't smell as bad. Yeah. But it's funny, so because of like COVID and everything, they started putting masks on the fish. 
too much, man. So the one, both, both toss the fish over, the mask goes flying in one area, and the, <laughs> and the fish goes flying in the other oh, part of the zone. Great. Yeah, who's like in charge then, of uh, duct taping that thing? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> exactly. And then, there, then the guy that comes out, he comes out in like the full, like all yellow, like yeah. rain suit get up. Oh, like the hard, the hard hat and everything on. So it, you got the, boys, the boys love it. It gets the boys going to say the least. Oh man, especially with you guys f- got fans there. I mean, just add to it. Everyone get yeah. pumped when the fish is. Right, the fans go nuts when it gets tossed over. Oh yeah, absolutely not. So it's just one guy that tosses it every time, though. Is it every game? It- uh, it's, uh, it just kind of changes every game from amongst the ring guys. Who they kind of I think they draw draw straws for it actually. Oh yeah, that must be a thing. Fish. Yeah. <laughs> It's a, who Omaha does something similar too, don't they? Yeah, something with it, but it's not as cool. No, no. I don't think so. Mm-mm. Not with the whole like <laughs> the harpoon get up from the guy, like yeah. he's ready to get after it. No, it's college hockey thing. I love it though. If there, you know, Angus, if there's one thing in college hockey in today's game, you know, what what do you think you would change about the game, if anything? Good question. One thing that I would change about college hockey? Yeah, just the rules or whatever it may be, like certain reps if, that kicked you out. Um, <laughs> it could be anything. Um, Geez, that's a tough question. No. Um, I think honestly limiting the amount of video review. Yeah. And I think, I mean, that's just kind of for hockey in general. I think like the NHL could take a page out of that, but that's just my opinion. Mm-hmm. I just think sometimes it like when there's like an offside call where it's literally like it's like not even half an inch yeah, yeah. between the guy being onside and offside and the ref calls it not offside you go in and score mm-hmm. i mean at that point i mean i get that it's technically the right call but it just it doesn't like sit right yeah yeah and absolutely. there's like there's always so much controversy and there's so much be momentum good if there's a being taken definitive call mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. no that makes sense i, like I agree answer. with that actually just keep the game going keep it old school we did it for how many right. years before, i mean obviously before i understand it for like goals and stuff and right especially like, maybe play. in the playoffs too like, like, like yes. the penalties would make sense I mean, I I don't think it makes sense for the one that I got kicked out for, but <laughs> for the other ones, it does make sense. <laughs> yeah, I'll say this is all going back to that misconduct, and I agree. <laughs> exactly. I'm never going to let yet. that one go. Yeah. No. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I'm excited for you guys to play Vermont and Boston again. It'll be good. Get back after them. Um, yeah, well, hopefully we don't get the same refs. Mm-hmm. No, I don't, I don't think they should be on the payroll anymore from the sounds of it. So I don't think so. I, I Honestly, I think what I think one of the refs from that game isn't on the payroll anymore. No. I mean, makes sense. Yeah, we support it. I mean, we're not. We don't like that. Taking, that must have been the reason job. why. I mean, yeah. yeah. If you're not doing it, how many goals do you take bother? away from Angus? Who knows? He's out of the. Yeah. Yeah. My sucks. goodness, that's not. That's not cool. <laughs> Angus, let's, let's talk about though your come up though. You played in the BC there at Langley. Um, you know, what, how did that help you prepare for Division One hockey there? Yeah, I mean, junior hockey in general. I think it was honestly the biggest thing that helped me before I came to college. Um, I mean, outside of the hockey aspect, I think it just matures you at such a young age. Mm-hmm. I mean, I was fortunate enough where I was, I mean, my house was two hours away from where I grew, from where I was playing. So I could go home if need be. Yeah. Um, but I mean, at the same time, I mean, I still billeted just cause it was just easier at that point. So I didn't really want to commute two hours, but, yeah. uh, <laughs> I mean, it just, just kind of makes you grow up. You get become more independent. Um, I I honestly, so I took a gap here before I came to UNH. I honestly think because of junior hockey, I got smarter from like not doing any schoolwork. Yeah, like just because I, like, I could develop like a routine as backwards as that sounds. No, I, I just kind of we've heard similar like an everyday things. sort of thing. Yeah. Even from guys sitting on our couch right now that, that helps set us up today. They, they agree. The yeah. School doesn't make you smarter. Yeah. <laughs> it does. No, it does. Well, just life experience, man. Yeah. Like, that's what it's all Take about. Thing no, totally. Through. And then like the hockey aspect, I mean, the BCHL is such a great league. I mean, they turn they turn a bu- turn kids into a bunch of a lot of college hockey players. So I mean, I'm pretty I'm fortunate to be one of those guys, and I was fortunate to have a really good coaching staff: Bobby Henderson, Stefano Rossini, Coach, mm-hmm. uh, Chris Shaw, all did a great job with me, um, and just helped me to become a college hockey player and round up my game. Yeah. All right. Well, you talk about like, you know, you took a gap year, obviously learned a lot. And like, you, I, I agree. Like, I think, you know, just life experiences will help, you know, build your brains more than a, a Zoom class would currently <laughs> this BS going on. But like, uh, I did read up that you are currently the, let me get this right, the co-vice president of the student athlete advisory committee at UNH. So 
you know, how did that start? What made you take the initiative there to, you know, start representing UNH athletes? Yeah, so a senior my freshman year, he was obviously leaving because he was a senior. That makes sense. But uh, yeah, he uh, he brought me in as a freshman to kind of get acclimated with it because he thought I could benefit from it. I mean, it's it's an organization that represents the athletes at UNH. We're kind of like the the group between like the administrators and the student athletes. We kind of yeah send messages between the two. Right. And honestly, our our big thing is making sure like student athletes are well taken care of and that sort of stuff. Kind of like the players association is for the NHL. Right. Um, it's good experience. But at the same time, we do a bunch of fundraising and that sort of stuff. Like a big thing for us is mental health. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I think that's a massive thing and not only hockey, but all sports in general for all athletes. Yeah, good. I, I, sure. I honestly can't think of one athlete that hasn't, like if there's an athlete out there that hasn't dealt with mental health, I can call them a liar. Yeah, right. Because yeah. I think at some point, like all athletes go through some sort of adversity where they're struggling with something, mm-hmm. and kind of getting the stigma out of the way there, it's uh, it's beneficial. No, I think that's something that's sure. talked about enough for sure, and you see more and more of just awareness being you know, being brought up in the NHL about mental health, and yeah, you see all this stuff. But being a you know Division One athlete, especially, and you're doing all this is working out and your school life, traveling, you know, on top of whatever you're dealing with back at home, like it's a lot. It's a lot. I mean, how do you go day by day and just manage your stuff? I mean. I can't imagine being, just doing that all. Do you have a secretary? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, my mom likes to make, my mom's my secretary. There you okay, go. I'll give her credit for that one. But uh, no, I mean, I, I kind of have a daily routine. It depends on the day, but normally mm-hmm. I'll go to the rink in the morning, either stretch and take care of my body or I'll go on the ice and do some skill work. Um, then I'll normally I'll have class kind of right after that up until practice time. And then I'll, uh, we'd have practice and then normally work out afterwards. Okay. And then if I have student athlete advisory committee I, that day, that wouldn't be till probably like 8 PM. And that's normally till like nine 30 and then go to bed from there. Gosh, what a grind of a day. Yeah. No time well, to yourself. You ever get, I mean, I'm tired just thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I mean, I, I'd, I'd rather do that versus sitting on my butt. Like, I mean, I'm, right. I'm kind of oh, sure. like, I, I can't do one thing for a very long period of time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's just, I mean, that's just how I am, I guess. I think it just adds to the resume and maybe it'll lead to a letter next year on the J. How about that? I mean, yeah. <laughs> we'll start maybe. advocating right now. <laughs> start and get the we ball going. You. We only know one person in the locker room very well. Yeah. But, you know. I mean, just well, to add to that well. resume thing, though, talk about playing for Team Canada, though. Um, what were you, nine, how old were you then? 19? Sorry, say that again. How, how was it playing for Team Canada there? Um, I saw you oh, played with my buddy Ross Armour there. Um, I went to Bemidji State with him, but... Uh, we watched a couple of your highlights from there, but you know, talk about that experience, what that was like putting the leaf on your J. It was once in a lifetime. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's not, uh, it's not every day you get the call from team Canada to play for them. Yeah. Um, but, to uh, kind of put on the, put on the Maple Leafs and represent my country. It's, uh, it's something I, I won't ever forget. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, we were, uh, we were lucky enough to win the, win the gold against the States there in the gold medal game, which was pretty cool. But, uh, it was cool. My dad was there and that's something I'll never, never forget between him and I. It's kind of one of those moments, I guess. Yeah. It's a pretty cool experience for sure. I mean, not a lot of kids get to say they played for their country. So yeah. that in itself, I mean, and then putting the dagger on <laughs> team USA, it doesn't just even add to it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. Yeah. Sorry about that one. Still no. hurts. Still hurts. Yeah. No, appreciate the apology. <laughs> we'll, we'll take what we can get. <laughs> do, uh, do we want to go speed around here? I think we could rip it. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Are you, uh, are you ready for just even, you know, harder hitting questions here? Am I throwing in you know, more of a intense track in the background, but just put yourself in that, in that space, I guess. No, oh, I cannot wait for this. All let's right. Go. Here we go. Um, let's start with best player you've played with and against. Mm. Best player I played with, um, Matt Barzell in the Summer League. Gross. And best player I played against, um, Morgan Riley in, in the same Summer League. Gross. <laughs> it's a hell of a Summer League. It's a hell of a Summer League. <laughs> Not bad. This guy's prepared. Yeah. Um, let's go. Favorite rank you've played at? Other than the Elephant. We already talked Alphon. about that. Other, other than the Whittemore Center? And that too, yeah. Yeah, obviously. So what are the ranks other than the Elephant? Yeah, it would be Elephant up in Maine. What about other than that, though? Other than the Elephant in Maine? <laughs> oh. Uh, I'd say Colorado College is pretty cool. That rings pretty. It's it's pretty old. It's a cool barn. I saw uh, Big Nose follows you, Crookshank. Yeah. Are you guys buddies? Are you guys brothers? <laughs> <laughs> no, 
No, we're not. Maybe, maybe way back when, but uh, we actually played against each other in the BC. Okay, okay, oh, that's what nice. it is. Okay, that's the connection. It, it was all, it was always a joke. Like who, who is the real Crookshank? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what? Give us the argument. Why are you the real Crookshank in that? Wait, sorry, say again. Why are you the true and like the one true Crookshank? Yeah, that's the argument there. Uh, well, the real, the real spelling is his spelling. Yeah, but. Uh, uh, when my when my ancestors came over, they just changed it to C R O O. Easier to say, I guess. I like it. I mean, it's more gritty looking. <laughs> you know, it helps everybody out. I, I agree. I, it's not as fancy. It's a little more, you know, like you said, gritty. <laughs> exactly. What about? Uh, let's go. Best I'm sure kick our ass, man. Yeah, like, we rip on him a little bit too much. <laughs> so I guess we'll get away from him. He, he's a beauty. We've had him on. Um, what about best die on the team for U N H? There, besides yourself, who do you give it to? Um, Coming to the probably either, probably my two linemates, Alec Jackson, Pierce, and Patrick Grasso. There you go. Yeah, they're, they're good play. Good. They? They're gonna feed you after <laughs> hearing that answer. <laughs> there you go. He set himself up for success. <laughs> <Yeah. right>? <laughs> I like that. What about? Uh, I was always curious of this one. Why the change from number six to number nine? Oof, also, yeah. side note. Nice. Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Um, I got I got a lot of those comments, but uh, <laughs> so a senior my freshman year wore number nine, mm -hmm. and I just figured the opposite of nine is six. True. Yeah. So right. I, I just went I just went with that. Plus Trevor Van Green's day for it. Okay. Fair. There I it like mixed me up so hard, and I was doing the edits on the uh, cover videos back in the summer. Oh yeah, yeah. I was like, I swear to God, he's number nine. <laughs> and I just kept seeing number six. If you like, if you get a choice oh. one day and you make the show, you know what number do you want to wear? What would be your choice though? I like that. It'd be number nine. Right, number nine. Yeah, we'll okay. We'll start with six. And then, <laughs> start with six. Okay. Maybe, maybe start with there. Just to, again. Yeah. yeah nice. You don't get a choice for your first game. You just they stick you with something. And then we'll see. Yeah. What about uh, more tucks or blocks this season? Oof. Hard hitting questions. Yeah. Right now you got more tucks. <laughs> <laughs> I might have to go with more tucks. There's nothing better than scoring a goal. But we did, so it's got to be over 20, though, because we're, we're going to hit that 20 block mark, I believe. Yeah, hopefully. I mean, knock on yeah. wood here. All right. All right. Fair enough. Good answers, both of them. What about, uh, I think we can ask this because you're 21. What's the best bar on campus? Oh, yeah. What's, what's it looking at? What's the, what's, the best bar? what's the best bar on campus? Where do we, where, where, where do the students go? Yeah, where are we going after that? Well, there's not a, not a whole lot of selection here in the hotbed of Durham, <laughs> Durham New Hampshire, but uh, there's either Scorps. Okay. Uh, oh, God, sounds or pretty, Libby's. Libby's? And uh, okay. I mean, I just turned 21, so I haven't got, been able to get the full uh, uh, right, experience true. here, I guess. But uh, from what I hear, uh, talking to some of the older guys, it's, uh, it's, it's a good time, to say the least. Okay. I like the sound of Scorps. Yeah. I think yeah, we're going there first. Going there. And then yeah. maybe if we can make it to Libby's after. I don't think we're making note of that. We're not Scorps, going to, but think yeah. you're making note of that. Yeah. No. Nobody makes it to no. Scorps. All right. <laughs> Fair. What about uh, any game day rituals for Ooh, you? Yeah. Game day, what's right? Rituals. What are you doing before the game? Yeah, Ooh. getting ready. I kind of talked about um, day, but yeah. Jeez, like I, I'm. I got a couple. I mean, I gotta go. I gotta put all my stuff on my right side first. Like, oh boy, stuff on my right palm first. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh boy. <laughs> I, I put my stick in the same spot before games, and um, I always gotta have a peanut butter banana bagel with uh, mm. with a protein smoothie on the bench before the game. Oh gosh, just getting ready. I've never had a peanut butter banana bagel, but now I want to. <laughs> well, it's highly underrated. Have, so. it's, it's That's the one thing holding me there. back for my hockey career. Son of a bitch. <laughs> All right. What about uh, who's you know who's got the worst playlist in the locker room? Yeah, who doesn't get the ox score? Yeah, worst music. Um, worst music or best yeah, music? No worst. worst? Yeah. Oh. I mean, if you ask the rest of my teammates, they'd probably put me. Um, <laughs> it's tough. What do you but, listen to? What do you, what do you got going through your airplane? I mean, I'm, a, I'm a big like, classic rock guy. I'm okay. a huge Rolling Stones fan, that sort of stuff. Ooh, um, I like it. I know it's not what the kids listen to these days, <laughs> but uh, I'd say the worst ones probably be Ty Taylor's. So I think we're in the middle of you talking about being a big uh, Rolling Stones fan. You're not really allowed to touch the ox, but let's go to more of a, a question that once you finally get into that uh, scopes, was it? What was it? What's the name of that bar? I'm missing it. Scorps. Right. Scorps. <laughs> or any karaoke Whatever. bar. What would your go-to karaoke song be? How you bring the house down? Uh, I probably go with uh, "Beast of Burden" by the Rolling Stones. 
it would probably not get a lot of cheers or anything like that. <laughs> I don't even I know that, that song, but I'd still cheer. Yeah. I'd well, still cheer, I think. I mean, like, maybe I know it. I can't think of it right now. Okay. It's a good, it's, it's not one of the not common ones, so I, I doubt you've heard it, but it's, it's a good one if you ever take a listen. Okay. Well, I will. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll go, listen go to back. after the game. I'll what go about uh, Go To Selly? You get a lot of them, so what's your go-to? Go-to. I don't know. I just kind of... Probably just like one knee fist bump sort of thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just in the moment. It depends, kind of of too. depends how much it matters, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Or I had one that I wanted to ask you. You and H Twitter. I don't know if you, I don't even think you have a Twitter account, but they have hashtag be the roar on everything. <laughs> what does be the roar mean to you? <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, Hard hitting. Be careful here, man. I, can... <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like I'm going to put the wrong answer no matter which way I go. But uh, if I don't get it right. Um, I think it means I think it's deep. like Something like that. Like <laughs> still be passionate even if you're watching on TV. I guess maybe. Okay. I don't okay. know. I, 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 the TV. I don't think anyone's ever been asked that, so I, I think that works. Yeah, I think that's fair. Yeah. I, I that's probably the hardest one. question I've ever gotten. <laughs> Let's go. That's. I think that's the clip. We're just gonna edit only that in. Questions. Yeah, only <laughs> tough. <laughs> only tough ones. Um, I'm trying to think of other speed rounds that we usually hit on. You got anything, James? Not the top of my head. That was. I really wanted to hit on be the roar. <laughs> um, okay, that, that, that was a good one. If you put that in on exam, I guarantee no one will get the right answer. Exactly. Like even filling or multiple choice, there there is no right. How answer. about uh, let's go to the weight room here? Who's lifting the most on the team? Ooh. This is a guy we do not want to mess with. Ooh. I like that. Uh, it depends on the the exercise. So there's a couple guys for upper body. So mm-hmm. Will McKinnon's pretty big. So is Ryan Barrier. They play together, so they just bully guys out on the ice. <laughs> um, when it comes to legs. Uh, one of my roommates, Philip Ingaris. Yeah. He was just uh he was just picked up by uh he was just picked by Edmonton. Mm-hmm. But he is literally I have never seen a guy have a better physique than this guy. Honestly, his legs are like literally honest to God, tree trunks. <laughs> and God. like not an ounce of fat on the guy. You could probably see like twelve abs on him. <laughs> Jesus. It's it's ridiculous. So we want to I, 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 yeah, convince his genetics. There you go. We're going to have him, you know, back us up when we go to Scorps. Like, wait, <laughs> just in case something goes down. Perfect. That, that's, that's definitely the guy you want. <laughs> okay. Fair. I love it. Yeah. He's our guy. Do we um, got any other questions here? I just had one, but it blanked. No. Let's, uh, let's, do, let's do a wrap up question here. You know, I guess, you know, if you got any advice for any kids out there who are, you know, aspiring to be Division One athletes, um, any sport really, but specifically hockey, you know, what advice would you give to them to help them achieve their goals? Good question. Um, one thing that kind of always hit home for me is just try to get better every single day. Yeah. Whether that's shooting a hundred bucks a day, whether that's taking the proper rest, like at the end of the day, like getting better is obviously it'll get you to the next level mm-hmm. and taking care of your body and doing the right things. I mean, it may not be what you want to do in that very moment. Like there may be other distractions or your buddies are going out yeah. or, and you're, but it's honestly, it's the sacrifices here. If you really want to be a player at the next level, it's sacrifices you have to make. Mm. And I mean, that, I think that kind of, at least to me, separates the guys who want to be players and the guys that are kind of fine with being mediocre, I guess. Oof. I like, that was goosebumps. There you go. Man. Yeah. I like you it from the goal scorer. So, no I mean, days off. How, so. how many pucks do you shoot? I mean, do you shoot it? Like, what do you do away from the rink in your free time? Are you shooting pucks or you sticking um, in? <laughs> it's funny. I, I my uh, I shoot pucks every day. Yep. Um, my my kind of mantra is a hundred pucks a day keeps uh, keeps the goalies away. Let's go. Um, I love it. It's a nice ring. So I, I try to do that. I'll do. I mean, a lot of. I mean, I like to shoot the pucks. So I like shooting pucks, doing wrist curls, um, mm. and like making sure and like stretching and taking care of my body are kind of my big things. What about, do you ever just set up like at the red line to start doing some high, just soft chips off the glass? Just <laughs> practice that out or that gets taken he care of. The puck in the zone, man. He doesn't dump it in. If he has to. <laughs> For the boys. Get a um, change. Just get I a mean, honestly, that, out there. That's a skill I'm going to have to learn if I want to play at the next level. So yeah. honestly, I probably should practice it a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Scouts are starting to murmur. So I, I'd get on that, but you know. <laughs> Just soft chips. Yeah, that's that's hilarious. That's all it is. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking of fucking, that's all I can think about. Soft chips. Soft Only. chips, man. Soft chips, baby. All right. No, uh, well, we uh we wish you the best of luck, you know, this weekend and uh you know moving forward here with your season and you know, I just want to see you succeed and definitely see you in the NHL one day. So we uh really appreciate coming on our fiftieth episode of Pucks and Deep. 
Big one. Yeah. Five zero. Just an absolute milestone. At the UNHJ yeah. up there, right? You know, it's I mean, good things only for the Wildcats coming. So right, yeah, we we play favorites here, Angus. So uh, we got some serious Wildcat fever this week. Expect a lot of coverage, and uh, yeah, just go off with it. Thank you again for coming on, man. This is awesome. Yeah. Well, of course, guys. Thanks for having me. It's, it was an absolute honor. Huge fans, you guys. I appreciate it a lot. No, man. We thank Woo. you for following the account and supporting Bless us, man. It means a lot to us. So uh, yeah, yeah. Now get the word out around the room. We'll follow the guys back too. You know, we're trying to get every college player and just keep growing the game. So. Um, but also, I will absolutely. Love yeah, we'll, we'll send you a shirt too. I'm gonna give you a shirt, and uh, yeah, yeah, feel free to rock that. Boy. Yeah, one of these boys. So a good Let's workout go. shirt, and uh, just rip 100 bucks a day in this, and yeah. you'll be on the sense here uh, pretty soon. Once we get, <laughs> once we get uh, long sleeves, I'm guessing XL in the forearms, <laughs> and then the rest will be just a large. But <laughs> I think so. Just a custom order for the guy. <laughs> just for my man here. <laughs> All right, so that was the man, Angus Crookshank. Maybe I think the current like best hockey name in college hockey. Yeah, we didn't even ask him. That was I. I was thinking about it. I don't know if he wanted to debate it because it's obviously up we for debate. We already did one name with, debate. Uh, it's enough with you know, Gunnar yeah. Wolf Fontaine from Northwestern. Yeah. Obviously a, a top notch name there, but yeah. I mean Angus Crookshank. Just a god, a double whammy there. So that's our guy. Obviously, I mean he lights the lamp so much. He's already got two in two games. Uh, keep feeding the guy. He had 16 sophomore year, 10 his first year. Mm-hmm. I mean, Wildcats are, they, they can bury the puck. They can bury they the to. puck. They're offensive. This guy knows what he's doing out there and uh, they get a chance for some very, very good team in UMass tomorrow. So be a good yeah. test for Angus and the boys. And uh, same with, they got UConn uh, this weekend. Yeah. Back to back series. So I think they play them this weekend and they get like a week or two off is what maybe they get a game in between then, but Who UConn knows, again, can change 10 times within today and tomorrow. So I'm predicting between Angus and uh, Karashik there at UConn, maybe 20 block shots just in those four games. Yeah. Yep. Just soaking up shots. So and maybe just a couple, couple majors between both of them. I mean, yeah, yeah. two gritty guys that get the job done, and who knows? The ref looks at Angus the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to be there. Crookshank, don't get your hands up, buddy. Yeah, no. Just Not Crookshank, I mean, uh, <laughs> Karashik. Karashik. God, yeah. just so many just golden names out there, man. Yeah, Karashik's a good one, too. Yeah, it rolls. just doesn't end. Um, Feels nice. Um, but It's been a while since uh, we had a nice holiday break here at ECH. Yeah, yeah, took uh, a week I mean, off again and just kind of regrouped. And uh, Right. Nothing changed. I'll still a gritty pod. We had another light back-to-back pods blow out Goodness. on us. Angus had a nice little uh, smoke alarm going off <laughs> yeah. every every five or ten minutes there, but I that's mean, gritty. We had be expected. a last-second meeting before the pod with someone, and then, I mean, half of our crew just left Oof. to go plow all night. So, yeah, I mean, snow plow. Just battle. Snow plow. Yes, yes. Let's, they yeah. went to go snow plow. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, let's, yeah, yeah a, gritty, a gritty time here at ECH. We're, ha- we're excited to be back, uh, you know, second half of the – the season's going to start here. I guess a quick recap what happened uh, with not a whole lot of games last week, but Quinnipiac, I mean, just took off, got back in the top 10. Yeah, our boy Ty's lighting it up, man. Ty just keeps going Tufto, off. Tufto, Tufto's having a season, man. He's got, what, 15 points in eight games, I and mean, just a hell of a year so yeah. far to start for him. But, El uh, Capitano, yeah. Odin, just going off there. I mean, so Quinnipiac is rolling. Uh, I mean, they knocked off teams that they should knock off, so I want to see, like, you know, that Bowling Green series was tough, but uh, obviously they got right back on the horse there, so... Great series for them. That's mainly the, I mean, the biggest thing I want to touch on. And then our top 10 did switch up a little bit. Uh, we bumped up Omaha. I think they deserving. Deserve Absolutely. Hell yeah, of a yeah. pod there. Boys can also light the lamp. Taylor Ward at the helm. Shouts to a former pod guest there. Re- recurring guest. We'll have him back on. Uh-huh. And then also, I guess Omaha is announcing that fans are expected at the second half here. And with that, that means ECH is coming through the doors. Damn I mean, right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so, I think I'm pumped for that. That, w- that wasn't in the press memo, but that's because, you know, some intern messed it up. Yeah. Obviously, yeah. like, just not, just fumbled the bag on that mm-hmm. one. So, we'll be in the building. Uh, I think we're dropping the the ceremonial puck, if I... I'd, that's what I heard. I'd be pissed if not. <laughs> I'd be pissed if not, but just At on least that, chuck I mean, the NCHC you know? is starting back up this week, and that in itself is I'm excited yeah. for. Well, there's been some cancellations already. Yeah, but... but- yeah, we still got games going, and um, I'm just excited to have the second half of the season roll around here. I'm right, really excited to see who comes out of the Big Ten, NCHC, more Dub more Jack. hockey East. Like Boston's supposed to play this week. God, yeah. I just want to see BU play. Tyler Goalie pulls their pass. He's got some nasty setup going. It's just good to have mm-hmm. everyone back in back in the game. And I think Huntsville's back. Like everybody's back. Like no, the gang always, is getting going. back they're together. Huntsville's never gone. They're never no, gone. No, I miss <laughs> I miss Connor Wood, man. Yeah, gosh, I need that hair. I need <laughs> it in my life. It's just been different without it. No, but know? we got the uh, the Golden Pan game. Um, this Ooh. week in uh, January first, Denver and CC. If you don't know about it, that's a big rivalry out there. You're gonna want to swipe lot, up. Yeah, a lot on the table for that one. Who do you got? Let's go. Who picks in that series? Golden there? Pan. You know, I'm just 
we haven't had a Denver guy on since Emilio. He's obviously not with the team anymore. They haven't reached out. Yep. Uh, since we've had two CC Tigers, we've had Big Nose. We've had our boy Copeland. Yeah. I'm picking, and they're playing well. They can score the puck. They can. You know, I mean. But Denver didn't have the best start to the year either, so you got to keep that Both in mind. teams are going to be hungry. It's going to be an absolute barn burner. I, I'll just go CC just because, you know, I'm liking me some Tigers. I'm going to go Denver. They're going to take the gold pens here, but. Both teams are solid. It's going to be, yeah, it's going to be two good games. I'll guarantee you that. And I'm excited to watch them. So. Exactly. A lot that, of pucks, Steve. That one is on uh, CBS on the first, though. So make sure to tune into that. CBS? Yes. Oh, yeah. Networks. <laughs> <laughs> Networks, people. <laughs> tune in. All right. So, yeah, big ones coming in. I mean, there's so many games this BU week. BU at Northeastern. That's another rivalry. I'm just pumped for that. I mean, yeah. like you said, you're excited for BU, but that's, uh, you know, I'm, I'm excited I mean, to see. Like, I'm excited to see what product they got this year. I don't, you know, we haven't seen anything. So, right. Yeah. yeah. There's so many teams that, I mean, just haven't played many games. Like right now, UNH played, what, two weeks ago. And because all these, you know, pauses, as you'd say, two week pauses, we're not going to see them until right now. And they got three games. So like things are coming. They got three games. Uh, I'm, I think BU is playing a bunch of games too. Like all these teams are going to be packing them in because you have to get them in if you want to, you know, make it to the tournament at the end of the year. So uh, it's kind of make or break week for the Hockey East, I want to say, just to get them, you know, ramped up. I mean, Vermont's playing again. That's nice yep, to see. Yep. My boys at the mid year, uh, they got a tough matchup in Mittens this weekend, but they're Ooh, gonna make do. Top so, twenty Mittens. Top twenty Mittens. <laughs> People forget. Um, but our then, guy. And then Bowling Green just has a chance to edit the record. Nice win today. We watched that was a gritty win. Um, mm-hmm. Took over the story too. Action. Oh yeah, yeah. Hell of a job by Muzzer there, and uh, yeah, Muzzer ki- killed that shit. So yeah, shouts to him. The boys uh, helping us out during the game as well. Obviously, it didn't slow him down one bit. Big third. I mean. They're a third period team. I mean, they came out a little slow. Came, came out, out a little, little slow, <laughs> but uh, they finished the job, and that's all that matters at the end of the day. So yeah, Robert Morris is tough this year. I mean, yeah, no, they're yeah definitely a solid team there, and so they played defensively well against them because they can I light think, it up. You know, we did that post last week about like you know which which of these teams are the top twenty. Could you see making an, just an appearance in itself, but a front yeah. four run? Rob Morris is right there. Absolutely. They can easily sneak up on some teams and watch out for my bees, obviously. But uh, who knows? Be, watch BU hasn't had any time and. I mean, there's a bunch of teams that could that yeah. are out of the top twenty that could you know be there come the end of the season here. So, facts. So I, I think the main thing we want to get get across to everybody is well, first of all, we hit 25k. Thank yeah, you everybody. That's a huge milestone. That's a huge milestone. That one feels good. Never never thought I'd get into that that number, but uh, I mean, this time last year, I think we were below 10k, right? Like well yeah, below. Yeah, we didn't, we hit 10k on uh, Valentine's Day. So, goodness. So yeah, so we're ahead of schedule here, people. We appreciate you mm-hmm. know. Obviously, we're trying to put in the work, but you guys helping us out, letting us know what yeah, you, you want us to cover. Kept us, kept us motivated through a COVID season. It's been very tough on our end of just media wise and everything, planning yeah. everything. It's been very tough. Funds are low, but we're making it happen. College hockey is growing. That's all that matters at the end of the day. So thank you guys for following and supporting and sharing. Like keep doing that. Right. We're gonna get this page to something special. I mean, chirp us if chirps are needed. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Fire your chirps in. Just rip us. I mean, go for it. But yeah, we'll block some shots. Yeah. Uh, so again, thank you guys for 25K. <laughs> we got a lot of games coming up on the slate here. You're going to want to yeah. follow our, our socials. We'll let you know exactly where those, when and where you can watch those. Obviously, you're going to have to be streaming them because I don't think fans are allowed this weekend. No. From what I know. So uh, tune into our stories and our page. You can find us at Everything College Hockey on Instagram. Team ECH on Twitter and mm-hmm. I think everything college hockey and every other social media. YouTube, TikTok. Yeah. Yep. You got so that right. LinkedIn. And, I mean, God, if you want to just impress your boss, you might want to add us on LinkedIn too. Absolutely. And yeah. uh, make sure to go to our story too and swipe up on our pickums. Uh, go sign up for Flow Hockey. Get to watch all these games for a cheap price and it's some good hockey. So I cover make sure to do that. That's helping us out in our, in, in our end and uh, just getting more pucks in deep basically by doing that. So Facts. I think it's like twelve ninety nine a month. You're getting playoff hockey come here and it's just worth it. So check out Flow Hockey. Other than that, do you got anything else? Um, no. I think just keep getting pucks in deep. This is episode 50. Guys, it's an honor. She's a greasy uh, one, too. We get to cover the best game in the world with, you know, players like Angus and and others. You know, it's been an honor. So thank you guys for your support, and uh, we'll see you next week. That's a wrap. (laughs) Just recording a couple (laughs) pucks. You know what it is. You got that in deep. (laughs) 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 He's not talking. You know, everyone wants you, I mean... Yeah. What's the life of a puck? <laughs> what's the life of a puck? I did not know that this is the 50th episode of Pucks. It'd be 50, you know. 5-0. That's why it is a milestone. Congrats on that 25K. Thank you, fans. Catch us next week. It's a wrap. Uh-huh. Woo!